Andorra, the country in the Pyrenees, contains a surprising number of attractions that we are going to introduce you to in this video to help you make your stay in the country perfect. We are back in Andorra once again, a destination we've visited many times. Today we are going to introduce you to our favorite attractions in Andorra, which are many. But the first thing we want to ask you, if you haven't already done so, is to take a look at the video with our Andorra travel guide, which contains all the basic information you need to have a perfect trip to Andorra. In the video we talk about what Andorra is like, its government, history, immigration, currency, health, transportation, internet, how to use your cell phone in Andorra, shopping, and many other topics. So here we go, the list of our top Andorra attractions in alphabetical order. Andorra la Bella is the capital of Andorra and the main urban center of the country, with just over 22,000 inhabitants. It is located in the center of the country and, unsurprisingly, at the bottom of the valley. The main institutions of the country are in Andorra la Bella, as well as many of the tallest buildings. Andorra la Bella forms a conurbation with the neighboring town of Les Escaldes. You cannot tell where one ends and the other one begins. Andorra la Bella is the place that everyone who comes to Andorra visits. Paradoxically, it is probably one of the least interesting places in the country. Along with Les Escaldes, Andorra la Bella is the destination for shoppers. Andorra la Bella is home to some of the most classic stores in the country. One spot that attracts a lot of people is Salvador Dali's Noblesse du Temps, Nobility of Time, a sculpture, made between 1977 and 1982, and donated to Andorra by a friend of the artist. Probably the most interesting interesting part of Andorra la Bella is its small historic center, with places like the Church of San Esteban, a Romanist church that was later renovated, the sculptures of the seven poets by the artist Jaume Plensa, human forms placed on stainless steel platforms, or the Casa de Laval, which we will talk about shortly. The historic center is well worth a visit. It is a quick walk with many charming corners. If you need to, there are elevators taking you to the historic center. BC Lab Andorra is Andorra's modern bicycle museum, opened in 2022. There is a very strong link between cycling and Andorra, a country where a hundred top professional cyclists live and train, and where cycling, both road and mountain biking, is very popular. You will find references to cycling all over the country. For that reason, it seems appropriate to find a museum dedicated to cycling in Andorra. The museum has two different parts, one with temporary exhibitions that change every six months. When we visited, the exhibition was dedicated to mountain bikes. The second part is the permanent collection, with bikes from a large private collector. Even if you are not a cycling fan, the visit is fascinating, with some absolutely incredible models, especially the older ones. In addition to the bike, in the collection there are several simulators that allow you to try uphill or downhill rides and virtual reality goggles. Access to temporary exhibitions is free of charge. To visit the permanent collection you have to pay. In the first comment below the video we will put links to all the places we mentioned along the program so you can check prices and schedules. The Pass Museo is accepted at BC Lab Andorra and offers a 50% discount on the entrance fee. The Pass Museo is a museum pass valid for many museums in Andorra. It costs 250 euros right now and offers a 50% discount on the entrance to three museums of your choice. It is valid for one year. From our experience, it is a pass whose investment is quickly recovered. For example, a ticket to BC Lab Andorra costs 5 euros right now. If you buy the pass, which costs 
250, you will pay 250 for the entrance to the BC lab, thus recovering the investment made in the past. From the second visit to a museum, you will be saving money. The pass can be purchased at any museum in Andorra and comes with a small booklet like this one with information about all the museums included in the pass. Caldea is a mega spa that attracts many people to Andorra. The unmistakable silhouette of the Caldea Tower is one of the icons of Andorra. The Super Spa is located next to the Valira River, in the heart of Andorra, in the town of Les Escaldes, neighboring Andorra la Vella, the country's capital. Les Escaldes already had a tradition in the use of thermal waters, and in the past it had several spa hotels. But in the 1990s, the local authorities opted for a project different from the traditional spas. Instead of using the thermal waters for therapeutic purposes, Caldea focuses on fun, which is why they call it a thermal leisure center. Caldea has several outdoor pools, but the heart of the complex is its gigantic interior, with a huge main hall and many smaller rooms with different types of baths, a sauna area and a massage area. The Casa de la Valle is the most important historical building in Andorra, and as we have already mentioned, it is located in the historical center of Andorra la Vella. It was built in the 16th century by a local family. In 1702, it was purchased by the Andorran parliament, which operated inside the house until 2011, when it moved to a new neighboring building. The parliament continues to meet in the house for protocol acts on important dates throughout the year. Visiting the house allows you to learn about the history of Andorra and its institutions, as well as the interior spaces, including the former seat of the parliament. On the upper floor of the house there is a space with exhibitions and photographs, where you are also invited to try on the dress clothes of Andorran MPs. There is a fee to visit the house and the pass museo is accepted. If you are interested in the history of the places you visit, don't miss the Casa de la Val. The Jardines de Huberri, Huberri Gardens, are a picturesque place. In 2005, a family living in the area decided to create one of the most amazing places in Andorra, on the side of a mountain at an altitude of 1250 meters. The location of the gardens with beautiful views of the valley below and the Andorra mountains in front is spectacular. But the picturesque touch of the gardens are the numerous sculptures scattered throughout the green space. Most of the sculptures are of animals of all kinds, and not only animals native to Andorra. In most cases, they are fairly faithful representations of the animals. The sculptures are scattered throughout the forest as if it were a great zoo stopped in time. The little ones will love the feast of animals and fantastic beings. In addition to the animals, there are other more artistic sculptures that are just as striking. The appearance of the gardens changes a lot throughout the year, and spring and summer are the months when they are the most beautiful. Admission to the gardens is free, it is not a wheelchair accessible visit. The Huberri Gardens are very close to Naturland in the town of San Julià de Loria near the Spanish border. There are a handful of parking spaces next to the entrance of the gardens. Merichel is a very beautiful name which means noon. The Virgin of Merichel is the patron saint of Andorra and her feast day is celebrated on 8th September. And it is in the Basilica Sanctuary of Our Lady of Merichel where the most important Virgin of Andorra is venerated. It is a very important place for the Andorrans in a wonderful location. Merichel is the most important temple in Andorra. The original Romanesque sanctuary, very old, was remodeled in the 17th century. In 1972, an event took place that caused a commotion in Andorra. A fire, which is remembered in photographs in the current temple, completely destroyed the temple. The sanctuary was burned down, as was the Romanesque sculpture of the Virgin, the oldest in Andorra. 
The Spanish architect Ricardo Bofill was commissioned to build a new church. In fact, the work was twofold. The old temple was rebuilt and is now used to tell the story of Medici and the cult of the patron saint of Andorra. The visit is free and the old reconstruction is located next to the new sanctuary. The new sanctuary was built in a new space inaugurated in 1976. The architect used a typically Andorran material, slate, a dark colored stone that contrasts with the green of the landscape surrounding the sanctuary and with the snow, a common presence during the winter. The other color used in the project was white, which contrasts with the black and also evokes Italian Renaissance architecture. The combination of black and white is discreet in the outside and more intense inside the church. The building mixes many styles and the large windows let a lot of natural light into the interior. Inside you can see a replica of the Romanesque Virgin that was destroyed during the fire. It was made from photographs of the original carving. The sanctuary is truly unique and where the architect's personal touch is most noticeable is in the cloister with an open central space crossed by large arches that do not support any vault in an attempt to integrate the temple with the surrounding nature. A cloister that it is certainly unlike any other you have ever visited in your life. Pope Francis declared the sanctuary a minor basilica in 2014. Don't miss, in a space adjacent to the modern church, a small exhibition of models of Romanesque temples in Andorra. They are of great beauty. The visit to the Merichal complex is free. The Tristaina Solar Viewpoint is one of the most spectacular attractions in Andorra. Moreover, if the viewpoint is beautiful, the route to reach it, it is no less so. The viewpoint is located at an altitude of 2700 meters, near the border with France. First you will have to drive to the bottom of the Ordino Valley until you reach the parking lot of the Tristaina cable car. You will take the cable car, which will take you to the base of the Creusans chairlift. You will take the chairlift up to the top station and walk 15 to 25 minutes to the viewpoint. Let's have a look at the details. At the base of the Tristaina cable car, there are several free, very large parking lots used by the ski resorts in winter. We parked, walked to the ticket office, bought a combined ticket, which includes the cable car and chairlift, and boarded the cable car. We took advantage of the fact that there are several cabins with transparent floors to enjoy the sensation of seeing the landscape at your feet. The ride is not long, lasting less than 10 minutes. When you get off the cable car, turn right. Ahead you will see a building with public toilets in case you need them. Continue to the right until you reach the bottom station of the chairlift. The cable car ride is beautiful, but the thrills start now on the chairlift. This is because you will be sitting in an open space, the climb is incredibly steep, and the ride takes longer, between 15 and 20 minutes. If you suffer from vertigo, think twice before taking the chairlift. Otherwise, enjoy the ride as much as we did. When you reach the top station, you will see the viewpoint on your right, which you can reach by taking a short walk. Depending on your fitness level, it will take between 15 and 25 minutes. It is an almost constant climb. Take the opportunity to rest along the way, contemplating the magnificent landscapes of the Pyrenees. Hiking in the high mountains is always an incredible experience. You can also take the opportunity to read the information on the different posts that tell the history of the project. Keep in mind that the path you are about to take follows a ridge that marks the border between Andorra and France. On the side of the chairlift is Andorra, on the other side France. You will soon arrive at the viewpoint which is actually a gigantic sun dial, 25 meters in diameter. It consists of a metal sphere 1.25 meters wide suspended over the valley. 
The central mast, 27 meters long, marks the time on the dial. The views from the top of the lookout are incredible, and so is the sensation of walking above the abyss. Several pieces of advice, as you can see from the images, this is not a hike suitable for people with mobility restrictions. A minimum level of fitness is also recommended. Wear appropriate footwear for walking in the mountains. Sandals are not appropriate. If it's a sunny day, apply plenty of sunscreen. Carry water, wear warm clothes. It is much colder at the top of the mountain than in the parking lot. And if it's windy, the cold is felt even more. The viewpoint can be visited all year round, but during part of fall, winter and spring, it is covered with snow. So if you go during that time, you need to go up properly equipped to walk in the snow. And finally, check the cable car and chairlift schedules we have included below the video. In summer, they operate from Monday to Sunday. The rest of the year, days and times are more restricted. Finally, if you feel like it, you can skip the chairlift and go up a steep trail. The descent down the chairlift is as pleasant or more than the ascent, with once again incredible views. Now just repeat the sequence in reverse, first the chairlift and then the cable car. Access to the viewpoint is free. The cable car and chairlift are paid. The parking lot, empty when we arrived at 9 a.m., looked very different when we returned to the car. Expect to spend a minimum of three hours on the visit. The Rock del Quer viewpoint is an unforgettable place in Andorra. It looks like it was made for the Instagram era, but it is actually mind-blowing far beyond its potential for selfies and amazing photos. The viewpoint is not on the road, you have to walk 10 minutes to get there. There is a free parking lot less than 200 meters from the access to the lookout. To get to the viewpoint you have to walk down a dirt road for 10 minutes. The access to the viewpoint is not suitable for wheelchair users. At the end of the road you will find the modern viewpoint, but in reality there has always been a viewpoint on the side because the views it offers on the valley are incredible, true paintings. The modern lookout, opened in 2016, consists of a 20 meter long walkway. 8 meters of the walkway are on the ground, 12 meters are suspended over the abyss, with the village of Canillo just below. Several parts of the platform floor are made of transparent material, which enhances the sensation of flying over the abyss and adds to the thrill of the attraction. At the end of the platform, there is a sculpture of a thinker, work of the artist Miguel Ángel González. He is seated on a beam suspended over the abyss in a contemplative attitude. The mountains in front of the viewpoint belong to the Gran Valira Ski Resort. They are covered with snow in winter and green in summer. When you go down to Canillo, look up because you will get a very real idea of the size of the drop from the viewpoint. It is breathtaking. The lookout is free most of the year with an entrance fee being charged during part of spring, summer and fall. You can purchase a ticket online or at the viewpoint ticket office. You can get to the lookout with your car, but in the winter months be very careful because there may be snow or ice on the road. Or you can buy a combined ticket that includes the Tibetan Bridge, which we will talk about later, and also includes a bus that will take you from Canillo, first to the Tibetan Bridge, and then to the Roc del Quer. Mont Magic, a play on words that in Catalan means both Magic World and Magic Mountain, is an amusement park located in a Gran Valira resort. It is a beautiful park in the middle of the mountains. The attractions are spread over the slopes of the mountain, covered in white in winter and green in summer. There is also a small lake that makes it even more beautiful. It is a family park with many attractions for the little ones, where in summer they can ride cars, bicycles or jump on mats. There are also nature walks, such as an interesting trail about mountain legends taken from Andorran traditions. In the pond you can ride kayaks, boats and a kind of water bike. In addition to the water attractions, 
adults can practice archery or take a long zip line, which starts from the highest point of the park at speeds of up to 80 km per hour and crosses the lake before reaching the end point. The Magic Gliss is one of Mont Magic's star attractions. It is a 555 meter downhill and 180 meter uphill toboggan run, where speeds of up to 40 km per hour are reached. You control the speed at all times during the descent, choosing whether you want to go down at a full speed or at a more moderate speed to be able to contemplate the views. The car is attached to the rails, so there is no way of flying off the track. Each car carries up to two people, including children, who must always be accompanied by an adult. You start at the highest point, complete the descent, and slowly return to the starting point. Magic Liz operates in both winter and summer. In winter, most of the park's attractions are snow and ski related. The only way to get to Mount Magic is by cable car from Canillo. It is not possible to go up by car. There is a covered parking lot under the lower station of the cable car. It is not absurdly expensive. And there is an open-air parking lot nearby, only slightly cheaper but with a time limit. The cable car ride is very nice, allowing you to see the village of Canillo below and the surrounding mountains. You pay for the cable car as well as for the rides, but if you just want to go up to the park and hike the trails, you don't have to pay anything beyond transportation. There are different types of tickets that include more or less attractions, and at the Canillo Cable Car Ticket Office, they explain everything very well. Naturland, formerly Naturlandia, is an amusement park in the middle of nature and mountains, reaching up to 2,000 meters above sea level. The park is located in two different areas. Most of the attractions are in the lower part at 1,600 meters above sea level, and the rest are at 2,000 meters. There are numerous attractions for all ages, which change according to the season. One of Naturland's strong points is the beauty of its landscapes. In the lower part, open all year round, one of the highlights, among other activities, is the Air Trek, a gigantic wooden structure with walkways, ropes and bridges, and a small zip line smaller than the one of Mont Magic. And above all, the Tobo Tronk, the longest toboggan run in the world, 5.2 kilometers long. It works exactly like the Magic Bliss we saw at Mont Magic, except that here the descent distance is 10 times longer. The Tobo Trunk is incredibly fun, absolutely spectacular, and we've already lost count of the number of times we've been down it. But there is so much more to enjoy, and if you take your little ones, they will have a blast and so will the adults. If it's a beautiful day, you can spend the day at Naturland and never get tired. Naturland is in the town of San Julia de Loria, near the Spanish border, and the park can be reached by car. Free parking is available. In the comment below the video, we will put a link to Naturland's website, where you will be able to check a lot of information, including the park's opening hours and prices. There are several types of tickets available, with different attractions included. Plan to spend at least half a day in Naturland. Ticket prices are high, and you do well making the most of them. On our last visit to Andorra, we refused to go through the ticket office in Naturland. In the past, you could go down the Tobo Trunk for 15 euros, which was already a high price. But now, if you only want to go down the Tobo Trunk once, you have to pay 35 euros, which also include a poor meal, or buy a more complete ticket that costs 40 euros for just the one descent. It is a shame. We used to love the Tobo Trunk. We spent the day going up and down when the park ticket gave you unlimited access. But it seems that experience is over, at least for us. Another amusement park high in the mountains of Andorra. In the case of the Palarinsal Bike Park, although there is a small play area with activities for children, as well as a zip line, the clear protagonist is the mountain bike. There are 60 kilometers of circuits through the mountains, more than 1,000 meters of slope, and all kinds of equipment. It is a hotspot for mountain bikers in Europe, and it is enough to look at the license plates of the cars 
that usually park in the park to realize that the bike park attracts bikers from all over the continent. The park usually opens in May, depending on the weather, and remains open until the end of October. With the snow, it becomes another of Andorra's great ski resorts. Anyone wishing to use the park buys a pass that entitles them to unlimited use of the park's slopes and lifts. You can go up to the bike park by car, there's a free parking lot at the top, or on the cable car from La Massana. There is a paid parking lot near the lower station of the cable car. It is a shame because the views on the gondola ride would be wonderful if it weren't for the fact that the windows are all in terrible condition. The cable car is prepared to transport bicycles on the outside. The Tibetan Bridge of Canillo was inaugurated in 2022 and has become one of the most impressive attractions in Andorra, a mind-blowing work of engineering and a great thrill. The only way to get to the Tibetan Bridge is on a special bus that leads from Canillo, next to the gas station at the entrance to the village. If you sit in the front seats of the bus, you will be mesmerized by the curves the bus has to make. It is not for the faint-hearted. The bus will drop you off on the main road. You will get off and walk for almost a kilometer on a tray in excellent condition, but mostly uphill. Are you in shape? You won't even notice the hike. If not, take it easy. There are some benches along the way to rest. One last climb and you will be in front of the bridge. At this point, they will check that you have a valid ticket to cross the bridge. The impressive structure is 1,875 meters above sea level and 158 meters above the river valley. The bridge is 604 meters long. It is just over a meter wide, enough to allow pedestrian traffic in both directions. You will be going back and forth across the bridge. It takes time to walk to the end of the bridge. The floor of the bridge is metal and holds your shoes well. As long as you don't look down, nothing happens. The bridge moves a bit. Despite being anchored to the ground by strong cables, it has to have some flexibility and the foot traffic above the bridge makes it move. Will you get sick crossing the bridge? Look, we are not big fans of cliffs and heights, but the walk was easy. As we've said before, just don't look down. The awe of the bridge's design and the beauty of the scenery make you forget that you're walking across a seemingly fragile structure. Tip, at the other end of the bridge, there is a sort of lookout point under the bridge with incredible views. Don't miss it. After the visit, you will return to the bus the way you came. The bus makes a circular circuit, passing every 20 minutes. It leaves Canillo, stops near the Tibetan bridge, continues to Rock del Caer and returns to stop again near the Tibetan bridge and continue back to Canillo. Therefore, when you arrive at the stop from the bridge, Take the bus going up if you continue to Rock del Care. Take the bus going down if you are going straight back to Canillo. If you have a valid ticket, you can take any bus without being tied to a specific time. There is a fee to visit the Tibetan Bridge. You can buy the ticket at the tourist office in Canillo or online. The ticket includes the bus. You can buy a ticket valid only for the Tibetan Bridge or a ticket valid for the Tibetan Bridge and the Mirador del Rock del Quer. The Ruta del Ferro, the Iron Route, is a four-kilometer nature trail located in the Ordino Valley that recaptures the valley's industrial history. It starts at the Yorts Mine, which can be visited during the summer months. The visit is paid. The Ruta del Ferro is a very easy nature trail that follows the course of the river almost all along its course, where there are very small slopes and that will take you to La Cortinada where the route ends. It is a circular route. You will park the car at the beginning of the route, complete the route and return the way you came. Along the way you will discover the importance of iron mining for Andorra, an activity that lasted until the end of the 19th century. In several places the color of the earth where the water flows reveals the presence of the mineral in the rocks of the region. In addition to being a beautiful route that can be contemplated in a couple of hours, the good thing about the iron route is that 
Along its way, several artistic installations have been placed, all of them related to iron and made by international artists. The works are very diverse, some easy to understand, others more cryptic, some surprisingly beautiful, others not so much, but in any case, delightful to contemplate in the middle of nature. One of the coolest installations is the Ordino family by artist Rashid Kimun, located in front of a large meadow overlooking the mountains. The installation, made up of several sculptures, represents people who have come to this corner of Andorra from different parts of the world. Russia, Japan, Mexico, Egypt, England and France. The artist invites those who contemplate his work to invent a common story for all the characters. It is a very interesting, beautiful and even funny installation. In front of all the installations you will find signs informing about the author of the work, the materials used, there is always iron, and an explanation of the meaning of the installation. The visit to the Ruta del Ferro is free of charge. Andorra's Tamaros are an ingenious creation of the Andorra Tourist Office to make children's visits to the country much more fun. You as an adult may not find the idea very exciting, but we assure you that the Tamaros are a hit with the children visiting Andorra. If you are traveling with children, go to a tourist office to get a booklet like this one in which you can register your visit to the Tamaros. They can be visited all year round, weather permitting. Tamaros are imaginary beings, quite difficult to see, that protect the nature and forests of Andorra. As there are seven parishes in Andorra, there are seven Tamaros, each one to protect the parish in which it is located. There are some Tamaros that are very easy to access, others are more difficult to find. When you are near the Tamaro, look for the seal that allows you to register in your notebook that you have visited the Tamaro. Once you have the stamps of the seven Tamaros, go to a tourist office, anyone will do, to get a small gift. Having finished the attractions with names and surnames, let us now mention four thematic attractions that you should not miss in Andorra. Wherever you go in Andorra, you will find contemporary art. The Dali work shown earlier is probably the most famous, but there are many others along the country's roads, including traffic circles, so keep your eyes open. Among the most prominent works is the O of Ordino, an art installation actually called Arcalis 91. The circle, symbol of perfection, is a window to the surrounding landscape and represents the opposition between the law of nature and the law of man. The other outstanding work is Storm in a Teacup. It symbolizes the magic of the forces of nature and turns a big problem in a small context into a small problem in a big context. It is next to the Col de la Botella, which we visit on one of the road trips through Andorra that we present in the Andorra Travel Guide video we published last week. Romanesque is the most important artistic style in Andorra, with churches built between the 8th and 13th centuries. Andorra's isolation and the fact that it has not been involved in major military conflicts have meant that its architectural heritage has been very well preserved over time. Today there are more than 50 Romanesque churches in the country and visiting the most important ones is a real pleasure. The main features of the Romanesque churches in Andorra are. The churches are simple and small, made of stone. Slate was used to cover the roofs. They are usually located in incredible places, high up in valleys with spectacular views. On the outside, they usually have a tower, which can be rectangular or circular. The towers are one of the hallmarks of the Romanesque churches of Andorra. Inside, there are single nave churches without large windows or sculptures. In many churches, there are medieval wall paintings 
and even small sculptures representing virgins and Christ. You can visit the exterior of the churches all year round. The interior, on the other hand, can only be visited in July and August, when the doors of the churches are opened and a local guide provides information to visitors. As the historical heritage inside some of the small churches is very rich, they remain closed most of the year. You don't have to visit all 50 Romanesque churches in Andorra, but if you want to see several beautiful places, here's our top of the Andorran Romanesque. In the parish of La Masana is the church of San Clement de Pal. <music> In the parish of Ordino, in the village of La Cortinata, is the church of San Martí de la Cortinata. In the parish of Escaldes and Gordani, at the top of the valley, is the beautiful little church of San Miquel de Golasters. In the parish of San Giulia de Loria is the church of San Cerni de Nago. In the parish of Canillo is the church of San Juan de Caselles. If you have the opportunity to visit it inside, it is quite interesting. Finally, in the town of Andorra la Vella is the most spectacular church of all, Santa Coloma. Inside the church of Santa Coloma, the walls are bare. The paintings, which have traveled halfway around the world, are now on display at the nearby Spy Columba. Inside the church, you will see a video mapping projected on the walls of the church where the paintings that once decorated the church are reproduced. Entrance to all the above churches is free when they are open, most of them only in July and August, with the exception of the visit to the church of Santa Coloma. To visit it, you must purchase a ticket that includes the neighboring Spy Columba. The Spy Columba is a modern museum built to house the original mural paintings of the Church of Santa Coloma in a space that recreates the interior of the church. In addition to the paintings, there is an audiovisual and some original artwork, as well as painting from other churches. The entrance to the Spy Columba also includes the visit to the interior of the Church of Santa Coloma we've just seen. An audio guide will accompany you on your visit to both the museum and the church. The Spy Columba accepts the museum pass. In fact, if you are going to visit the Spy Columba, be sure to buy the pass, as the discount you will get on the entrance fee exceeds what you will spend on the pass. First, visit the Spy Columba and then continue to the Church of Santa Coloma. In addition to religious architecture, in Andorra you can also see several examples of Romanesque civil architecture, mainly bridges, such as the Bridge of the La Margineda in the town of Andorra, la Bella, or the small bridge of Lestarell, which is located in Yorts in the valley of Ordino. Examples of Romanesque architecture in Andorra are spread throughout most of the country, and wherever you are, there will always be a small church nearby. As we explained in the Andorra Travel Guide, Andorra is a destination to be visited by car. And for those who enjoy driving and not get sick with curves, Andorra's mountain roads are a real pleasure. And there are many mountain roads in Andorra. From what we have seen over the years, even in places where it is signposted that the road is in poor condition, they are in excellent maintenance condition. There are only two precautions you should take. At all times of the year, be aware of the presence of many cyclists on the mountain roads. Always overtake them safely. And in late fall, winter and early spring, pay attention to the presence of snow on the road and the risk of avalanches. Although local authorities always keep the main roads clear with their fleet of snow plows, 
the risk remains. We have driven through Andorra in winter, as you can see in the images, and it has been a beautiful experience. A snowy landscape on a sunny day is unbeatable. But if you are going to face winter driving in Andorra, you should do it with a car equipped with snow chains or winter tires. And always check the condition of the roads you are driving on. When it is very cold, the shaded parts of the roads may contain ice patches. If you like strong emotions, you can be sure that driving in Andorra will be a real delight. Once again, we remind you that in our Andorra Travel Guide video, we presented the three road trips that we are preparing for you to enjoy the most of Andorra. One of the biggest attractions of Andorra is its snow and its ski resorts. Andorra is called the country in the Pyrenees for a reason. The whole country is in the mountains. In Andorra, there is only the top of the mountains and the bottom of the valley. And in winter, when the snow falls, the mountains are filled with white and the snow cannons are set in motion to lift the slopes of the ski resorts ready for the winter season. Andorra has a long, long tradition of exploiting snow and winter sports and has three major ski resorts which operate jointly. The largest is Gran Valira with more than 200 kilometers of slopes spread over several sectors. The second large resort is Pal Arinsal. And finally, there is the Ordino Arcalis Resort. In Naturland, the park we talked about earlier, there is also a cross-country skiing track. And that was our presentation of the main attractions of Andorra. In the three road trips that we will publish shortly and whose links we will put below the video, you will see itineraries that take you to most of those attractions. As always, if you have any questions about the subject of the video, take advantage of the commentary box to ask. On the screen, you will see now our complete Andorra travel guide so that your stay in the country is perfect. Be sure to watch the video, we are already waiting for you in it.